السلام علیکم ناظرین میں ہوں سیبی کازمی آپ کا ہوسٹ ناظرین ماہ رمضان کے اس بابرکت مہینے میں بھی فلسطینیوں کی مشکلات کم نہیں ہوئیں کل غزہ میں نو فلسطینیوں کو شہید کیا گیا جس میں بچے بھی موجود تھے اور ایک حاملہ عورت بھی موجود تھی بچپن سے یہ فلسطین کا مسئلہ سنتے آئے ہیں اور اب ہم لوگ بوڑھے ہو رہے ہیں لیکن فلسطین کا مسئلہ جو کا تو ہے دو ہزار ایک سو باون بچے اب تک شہید ہو گئے ہیں دو ہزار سے دو ہزار اٹھارہ تک ایک محتاط اندازے کے مطابق ساڑھے سات لاکھ فلسطینی اس جگہ سے نقل و مکانت کر کے جا چکے ہیں لوگ اکثر پوچھتے ہیں کہ آپ کو فلسطین سے کیا مسئلہ ہے تو میں ان کی خدمت میں یہ عرض کرنا چاہتا ہوں کہ حدیث مبارکہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے مسلمان ایک جسم کی مانند ہیں جب ایک حصے کو درد ہو تو پورا جسم تڑپتا ہے فیس بک یوٹیوب ٹویٹر پر ٹی وی پر ان کے بچوں کی معصومیت اور روزانہ کی بنیاد پر اسرائیل کی جاریت دے کر دل بھی دکھتا ہے آنکھ میں آنسو بھی آتے ہیں اور غصہ بھی آتا ہے پھر ایسے میں پروگرام بنتے ہیں لوگوں سے بات ہوتی ہے کیونکہ مسلمان ہیں ایک جسم کی مانند ہیں فلسطین کے ارد گرد بائیس اسلامی ممالک ہیں تیل کی دولت قدرتی وسائل سے مالا مال ہے طاقت ہے فوج ہے لیکن کسی کے پاس اتنی جرت نہیں کہ وہ ان کی آنکھوں میں آنکھیں ڈال کر انہیں کہے کہ تم لوگ غلط کر رہے ہو یا کم از کم بیان ہی دے دیں انہیں کنڈیم ہی کر لیں وہ لوگ نہیں کرتے دنیا میں اس وقت ایک سو تریسٹھ ممالک ایسے ہیں جنہوں نے اسرائیل کو ایک ریکگنائز ملک تسلیم کیا ہوا ہے ان میں آسٹریلیا بھی شامل ہے دوسری طرف فلسطین کو ایک سو سینتیس ممالک ایک فری سٹیٹ مانتے ہیں آسٹریلیا نہیں مانتا آج میں آسٹریلیا کی بات اس لیے کر رہا ہوں کہ پچھلے سال ٹھیک آج کے دن میں نے فلسطین پر ایک ویڈیو بنائی تھی جو کہ چھبیس لاکھ لوگوں نے دیکھی اس کا ترجمہ مختلف زبانوں میں ہوا مجھے فلسطین سے بھی میسج آئے اور اسرائیل کے لوگوں نے بہت سے سوال بھی اٹھائے لیکن اس ویڈیو کے آخر میں میں نے ایک آسٹریلین پارلیمنٹیرین کو خراج عقیدت پیش کیا سلوٹ پیش کیا وہ خاتون آج ہمارے ساتھ ہیں وہ اٹھارہ مئی کو ہونے والے فیڈرل الیکشن میں اپنی کیمپین کر رہی ہیں بہت مصروف ہیں لیکن فلسطین کے مسئلے پر وہ ہر جگہ کھڑی ہو جاتی ہیں اور بات کرتی ہیں حالانکہ نہ وہ مسلمان ہیں اور نہ ہی ان کا فلسطین سے کوئی تعلق ہے لیکن رنگ نسل اور مذہب کی ذات سے ہٹ کر ہمیشہ انسانیت کے لیے وہ کھڑی ہوئی ان کے پروٹیسٹ میں جاتی ہیں ابھی ریسنٹلی فلسطین سے واپس آئی ہیں جب آسٹریلیا کی ایمبیسی کو موو کیا جا رہا تھا تو انہوں نے قرارداد پیش کی بڑا شور مچایا اور پریشر میں آسٹریلیا نے وہ امبیسی موو نہیں کی بہت سے لوگوں کو شاید یہ باتیں سمجھ نہ آ سکیں لیکن بڑے آنے والے دنوں میں آپ کو سمجھ آئیں گی کہ یہ کس طرح کے لوگ تھے جو گمنام ہیرو جیسا کردار ادا کر گئے ہمارے معاشرے میں آج ہماری خوش قسمتی ہے کہ مریا ہمارے ساتھ اسٹوڈیو میں موجود ہیں انہوں نے مجھے اس بزی کیمپین میں وقت دیا کچھ دن بعد ان کے الیکشن ہیں لیکن وہ آ گئی ہمارے اسٹوڈیو میں میں ان کا بہت شکر گزار ہوں ایک چھوٹی سی بریک کے بعد ان سے بات کرتے ہیں میرے ساتھ رہیں بریا تھینک یو سو مچ فار گونگ اس یور ویلیوبل ٹائم بیکاز آئی نو الیکشن کانٹیسٹنگ آن ایٹینتھ آف مئی تھینک یو سیبی فار انوائرنگ می وائی ڈو یو اسٹینڈ وتھ پیلسٹائن ایون اف اٹس دا میٹر آف موونگ دی ایمبیسی ٹو جروسلم اور ریکگنائزنگ Palestine as a free state. What is the reason behind? I'm sympathetic to Palestinian people because I think that uh, at present they remain a people that are under occupation and it really is about you know protecting their human rights and having been to Palestine on a number of occasions I have seen the manner in which the, pe- the Palestinians have to live. Um, effectively they're still under occupation, they're denied, um, refugees are denied return to their ancestral homelands and unfortunately uh, the situation in Palestine uh, at the moment uh, sees the Palestinian people um, enclaved around a huge wall that the State of Israel has built and their daily lives uh, are all about having to negotiate very elaborate checkpoints in order to be able to get from one place to another. These are people whose freedom of movement is constantly uh, obstructed by a system um, that is imposed upon them by um, a state that continues to occupy them. Okay, once the Labour government comes into the power, you will push through this resolution again or it was just a once-off thing? And you just recently visited Palestine. 
Would you like to tell us how was that and what's your experience like? Um, my experience this time, and I've visited the area on a number of occasions in the past, is that there is a, a sense of hopelessness, especially among young Palestinians who have almost given up of any prospect of resolution um, and all the promises that have been made uh, during the Oslo peace process in particular, they feel that they have uh, waited long enough, they are seeing no progress and there's a lot of concern uh, in, in Palestinian, in, in the West Bank in particular, that young people might decide that waiting patiently uh, may not be an option anymore. Maria, as you know, I am from Pakistan. Thousands here in Australia and millions in back in Pakistan were really hurt about the remarks or the speech of uh, Senator Fraser Anning when he stated Pakistan and Palestine both are supporting the terrorism. Do you think that a, a senator, a, a representative of Australian government should accuse a sovereign country like that? I would, show, I would like you to watch this video first and then I need your comments, please. Morrison himself is a bit hypocr uh, hypocritical. Uh, his government is funding the Palestinian Authority. He's also funding the uh, Pakistanis. Uh, these people, uh, both these governments are uh, um, supporting terrorism uh, on, on a large scale. Well, I, I would firstly suggest that politicians like Fraser Anning should be a lot more um, aware and uh, of the issues that they um, have a view on. Um, I, I'm not sure that Fraser Anning actually understands the real issues around uh, the Palestinians, for example, and probably doesn't know Pakistan from, as they say colloquially, a bar of soap. I mean, he, this is a politician that has resorted to certain slogans that he believes work for him because this is how he hopes to get himself re-elected in uh, the Australian Senate. So when someone is doing that for specifically for the purpose of appealing to voters, and he's actually doing a lot of damage to the Australian community. Yes, he is offending uh, the many Australians of Pakistani background here in Australia, and certainly the Palestinians, but it's a very, very um, dangerous uh, narrative and it's very unfortunate that we have people in this country who pursue public office on the basis of being divisive um, towards other people. So it's just unfortunate that this is happening in our country at this time because it certainly doesn't reflect, as far as I'm concerned, the balanced view of the broader Australian community. Uh, Senator Fraser Anning also stated recently that if you want to vote Labor, then you should be ready for having a next door neighbor as a Muslim. What's wrong with being a Muslim to your next door neighbor? Is it really a problem? Fraser Anning is on the fringes of Australian thinking. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that he managed to get himself elected into the Senate, such is the nature of our system. And he is a person who represents a minority view However, he has a platform and he uses it. Uh, Muslims have been coming to Australia for decades. They are part of the broader Australian migrant community. They are an integral part of what is multicultural Australia. And they are not a separate entity that should be attacked at will by people like Fraser Anning, who feel that that's the only way they can you know, grab some attention and possibly get themselves elected into parliament. He is on the periphery of the Australian community's views. Uh, would you like to tell us what's the Labour's policy will be if he comes into the power about immigration, especially with the, with the migrants' parental because visas? The, the fee structure is really heavy and very confusing. What's the changes going to come? Well, we've, we, Labor, as you would be aware, has already announced that on the issue of the aged parent visas, not only are we reducing the, view, the fees substantially, we're actually uncapping it and we're also allowing Australians or, or people who live here to be able to sponsor both sets of parents. I mean, we believe very strongly and recognise the importance of the extended family to, to migrants, uh, my own family included. When I came to Australia in 1963 with my parents, my, my father brought our grandmother to Australia and she uh, looked after us and my cousins. I mean, we value our extended family. Labor understands that because the Labor Party effectively is the party that, with Arthur Corwell, the first immigration minister, um, we, we uh, are the architects of modern Australia and migration underpins the, the, the success of this country 
and um, I'm very pleased to, to, to be part of that announcement because I know how important grandparents and parents are to their family. Would you like to give any message to your voters or supporters or people, those who will be watching this? I'd like to um, just, just tell everyone that voting in this country is a privilege and it's also an obligation and I'd like to believe that people are taking this election very seriously. This is a very important election. This will be an election that sees Australia change course in so many ways, not only in terms of fairness for all Australians, uh, which the Labor Party and our policies are committed to ensuring that all Australians get a fair go, but also we need to finally rid ourselves of this very negative and divisive anti-migrant uh, uh, you know, narrative that unfortunately has, has completely dominated our parliament. We need to push back and, 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 and totally push out of the picture the Fraser Annings of the world even the Pauline Hansons of the world, these are people who purport to support and defend Australia, but in actual fact, they are nothing but racists and people who will not tolerate migrants in a country that was built by migrants. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Maria, for giving us time. Thank you.